Well, one thing's for sure. After coming out of this movie, I am definitely feeling the need. The need to want to go back and watch this movie once again in theaters. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to give you my review of the newest release, Top Gun Maverick, hitting theaters this weekend. Got to see it with a packed crowd this past Thursday night in Regal IMAX, and man, this film did not disappoint. Everyone, real quickly, if you did enjoy this review and you like what I had to say, be sure to drop a like on the video and leave a comment down below if you have seen the movie. Let me know your thoughts. Like it or dislike it, this is always a place here for a conversation, no matter which side you stand on. And also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new and you want to see more, I would greatly appreciate it. Jumping right into it, I would like to say as somebody who actually only recently saw the original Top Gun for the first time, this movie is a hundred steps above what the original film did. I don't remember the original movie as much as other movies, and that's not to say that it wasn't good, but just that it was a movie that I saw and thought it was just okay, and I went on with my life. Here with Top Gun Maverick, I feel as though this is the best thing they could have done to really give people a reason to see a sequel 35 years later. Tom Cruise returns as Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell, one of the best fighter pilots the Navy has ever seen, and here now returns as an instructor for a new class of recruits at the Top Gun School of Fighter Pilots. Included in those group of recruits are Miles Teller as Rooster, or as if you remember from the first film, Goose's son, Glenn Powell as Hangman, Monica Barbero as Phoenix, and Lewis Pullman as Bob. The film also stars a few other familiar faces, such as John Hamm and Ed Harris who play admirals, who are tasked with putting Maverick in line with goals that need to be reached for the movie's mission. Jennifer Connelly also stars as Penny, who becomes somewhat of a love interest for Tom Cruise's Maverick. To finish off the cast, I would like to give a special shout out to Val Kilmer, who makes a special appearance in this movie as Iceman, and his scene was played out very well, especially since the actor has come down with a form of throat cancer that has prevented him from acting in recent years. The entire cast in this film really gives their all and does an amazing job. The movie is also directed by Joseph Kaczynski, who has helmed another Tom Cruise film such as Oblivion, the most recent Tron Legacy film, and also Only the Brave, all films of which I have seen and thought were actually very decent. Here Kaczynski gives his best work, from the way the film is directed and shot, to the gorgeous and very much practical cinematography that is shot in real fighter jets, and especially to the action set pieces that are put on display near the end of the film as our fighter pilots venture off onto their mission. Hans Zimmer does the score and the music here, and man to this day, that man continues to prove why he is giving a guy like John Williams a run for best film composer to ever live. Everything from the technical side on this film is very good and thoroughly looked at from a filmmaking perspective. Now with that, every film comes with its flaws, and no matter how I feel about the flaws in this movie, I still contest that a movie like this can be as close to a masterpiece in the film scene as any movie that I have seen so far this year besides The Northman. With regards to flaws, off the top of my head, the first one that comes to mind is the love relationship between Tom Cruise and Jennifer Connelly, which I never thought the relationship was the problem, only that it felt weird as a choice to bring her character in considering she was never she was only ever mentioned in the first one and the original film to this day the the audience member would see the relationship as feeling forced and unnatural especially since we never actually saw her character show up in the first film while i thought the first 10 to 15 minutes were very cool i have to say after thinking about it it felt very unnecessary and maybe a way to add in an aspect of real life social commentary there is a jet that is flown that is never seen ever again in the movie and i still can't understand why it was there in the first place no matter how dope it was to see it to see it fly in the sky. In a way, that whole sequence is only there as a segue to the real plot line of the movie, which sucks since I was actually hoping it would come back later on in the film. As a final flaw that I found with the movie, the group of Top Gun recruits that we see consist of 12 fighter pilots, six of which are our main group of fighter pilots that we focus on, and then the other six are people that we literally don't get any screen time of. To that degree, I felt it to be a bit of a missed opportunity to not at least give them something to do other than just be in the background of every scene they were in. Without going into spoilers, I will add on another piece of goodness that I can't go into, but the last 20 or so minutes is definitely a sight to see. As much as I might feel that people are overhyping it a little bit, it was still an incredible display of action and filmmaking that gets you on the edge of your seat. 
So with that all being said, I have nothing more to say uh, for this review, and the only thing I can end off by saying is please do go see this in theaters, as not only is it a theater experience for the summer, but see it on the biggest screen possible. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a good weekend ahead. Be safe, enjoy life, and I will see you all in the next one.